Hello, everybody. As you can see, I'm wearing my Halloween festive Disney sweater. I'm obsessed with it. The back is even cooler, but um, Halloween is tomorrow. I'm so excited. Um, so I, I honestly was really doubtful if I would ever make a second YouTube video. I'm not really a YouTuber. As you can see, the first video I have on my channel, I, it wasn't anything fancy. It was just kind of something out of the blue and something that I just wanted to talk about. So, um, I just, I've gotten a lot of, um, comments about people who want to know kind of where I'm at now since leaving the church and, um, it's been a process for several months. So it hasn't just been like an overnight decision, but, um, yeah, so I just kind of want to get into where I'm at now, what I believe now since leaving the Mormon Church, or is known as the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, so initially when I first read the CES letter and I did more research on um, the church's information as well, I didn't just go to the CES letter. Um, I read all the church gospel topic essays. I read Fair Mormon, or it's now known as, um, I think it's like Fair LDS or something because they don't go by... Mormon anymore. Um, there's a lot of, it's important to get both sides of the information. Um, I do agree with that just because both are biased and it's just important to look at both sides of anything that you do. Um, so yeah, initially when I first found out the actual truth of the history and things that I explained in my last video, um, I kind of just needed to digest that first before I just jumped into something new or you know you just kind of it was a loss it was I had to kind of grieve the loss that the church wasn't true um because it was a very big deal for me that it was true right and um I left like I talked about my mission last time I left everything behind in my life for 18 months and I don't regret it. It was a really good experience for me and I met some really, really awesome people like I mentioned and the people of the church. There's some really, really good people and I love the people of the church. I will never ever talk bad about anyone unless there's good reason to. Um, but most of the people in the church, they're really good people and they're very friendly. Utah's a little bit of a different story, but in Wisconsin they were really, really nice and friendly and it was quite refreshing. Um, but yeah, so I kind of just needed to grieve the loss that the church wasn't true. Um, and that was extremely hard. I'm still grieving it. I don't know if I'll ever fully get over it. Um, because I fully believed it was true. And I just, you know, and finding out it's not true, it's a loss. You know, having a father in heaven, like the story of Joseph Smith that the church tells, you know, come down and speak to a young boy who was praying and calling him by name it meant so much to me that god knew me by name and all of these things and so figuring out that that's not how it all happened and it was traumatic to say the least it was a loss um i cried almost every single day and um i still cry about it sometimes i cried about it just the other day um, just because it's just, you know, I could pretend that I didn't read all of that stuff and I could pretend that I could just push to believe it's true anyway, but I emotionally knowing like the real history, I, I just can't do that to myself and I don't want to be living something that's just not real to me. Um, and I want to acknowledge that a lot of people still believe the church is true and that's great. But um, I personally don't believe it's true. And so if you do believe it's true and still want to watch this video, that's fine. But please don't be critical of that. I've already made that very clear of where I stand with everything. Um, and it's been really, really hard. And a lot of people will say, like, why can't you just leave the church alone? Why do you have to talk about it? And I have to talk about it because, first of all, it's one of the hardest things I've ever gone through and telling someone like i know it's really hard but just don't talk about it like don't talk about the church don't attack the church and i feel like it, it's hard because i think a lot of people in the church they look at it as when i talk about church history or things that i have a problem with the church itself that i'm 
taking that personally on them. And that is, that's couldn't be farther from the truth at all. And I wish that we could be better at separating the two, that my relationships with people in the church has nothing to do with the fact that I left the church. And I don't know, I just think it's really sad that people will literally not want to be your friend anymore. And ever since um, coming out publicly on YouTube and I shared it on my Instagram story, my YouTube video of my faith crisis and you know, my struggles and what I believe now and just everything, you know, my conclusion with all the information that I had, I had a lot of friends unfollow me and I had a lot of friends, well, I've had some friends reach out, reach out and try to tell me why I'm wrong and things like that. And, or the worst case scenario, just people don't want to be my friend anymore. They don't want to follow me. They don't want to be a part of my life anymore. And that hurts, you know? Um, it hurts a lot and especially I think it's just people from my mission that I noticed unfriended me or unfollowed me not just like companions but like members that I met that I absolutely love and adore just to have those relationships just not want anything to do with me anymore it's really hurtful and so it's been hard I expected it to happen I didn't expect everybody to stay around and be super supportive like I know that this is a hard thing and I respect for some people they don't agree and that's fine. I still think that you can have friends and like you can be friends with someone and believe something completely differently. And I don't know why in Utah, if someone ends up leaving the church, people tend to kind of freak out about it instead of just listening to them and trying to understand where they're coming from. Um, I think that's something that we could all really work on is not just listen to our own perspectives, is listen to other people's perspectives and their stories and learn from them and grow from them and have compassion for people's pain and people's experiences and what people have to say. And um, I know that <laughs> Elder Bednar, he did a talk. It's, it's, oh my gosh, it's just, it's turned so many people against each other in the church. Um, he talked about how it's a choice to be offended, right? And I agree with that. I 100% agree with that, but something that I love that Dr. Julie Hanks talks about, if you guys know who she is, she's a Utah therapist for mixed faith marriages or anyone leaving the church or just anything in general. Um, something I love that she said is like, there are times where it's appropriate to be offended. There's times where what we say is hurtful and we need to take responsibility for that and apologize. And I feel like that's being more Christ-like than anything else in my opinion. And so why we struggle to do that I think maybe it stems from a lot of the messages the church sends out and it's just like, oh, you can't criticize church leaders. You can't criticize any of the church. That's wrong. And I just feel like that that's just so unfair to say. And I feel like it's healthy to think for yourself. It's healthy to have these criticisms. It's healthy to sometimes say, you know, I don't agree with that. And I have a problem with that. Can I talk to someone about this? Um, there's healthy ways to disagree with people. It doesn't have to be a nasty fight, but, um, there's definitely healthy ways that you can talk with people and I think you just kind of have to have compassion and love for them. And to me, that is Christ-like love. That is who Christ was, right? That's what the New Testament teaches of him and um, that's what I wanna do. And it's not my job to judge other people or tell them what they should believe or tell them that they can't be in this relationship or yada, yada, yada. Um, it's important to love and care for people, but it's a whole other thing to come and emotionally attack someone than just say, hey, I'm concerned about you and I love you and I just want you to know like I'm here for you. Um, and so sometimes I just wish that we could be like that. And um, it's just it's just really sad to me that I've already lost people from my mission or people, just friends in general because of me just sharing my own experiences, me sharing my faith crisis on my faith journey. Um, it's not easy, but um, Honestly, I have to be honest, coming public about it has been the best, hardest thing I ever did because I've had people reach out to me that have struggled and now like they know that they can talk to me about it and like they're not alone and I'm not alone. And it's honest, it's great. It's, I've, I've made so many friends since sharing this information and like not even like new friends, but just people that have reached out to me and been like, hey, let's go out for lunch sometime and talk. I really wanna to talk to you because I kind of agree with a lot of things. And it's just been refreshing. And even if you don't agree, like we can still be friends. So, um, but yeah, so a lot of you have been asking on a different note, like what I believe now. 
And for a very, very long time, for months, I didn't know what I believed. I kind of had to take a step back from religion altogether. And I know that that can sound scary and that that can, you know, I know a lot of people that have left the church with research on the Book of Mormon and on true church history. And then they do research on the Bible. It leads them to be atheist. And a lot of people might not like this, but I totally understand where they're coming from. It's something that I thought about for a while. Like, do I believe in God? Do I believe that Jesus is the Christ, that he is my savior? And, um... I was really hard. I had a lot of hard, long conversations with my husband about it, about, I don't know what to do. And, you know, my husband, he's just been so supportive and so sweet and so loving through this whole journey. And I couldn't have done it without him by my side. And even though we may be on, you know, different beliefs right now, different pages for beliefs, um, he's truly just been so loving and he's been trying to help me process how I feel without him, you know, being swayed by my personal beliefs right now. And um, I admire him for that and I respect where he's at and he respects where I'm at. And so it is possible to have a mixed faith marriage. Um, it's possible to make it work. And um, I just really lucked out with my husband. So I love him very much and I'm just, I'm so grateful for him. And uh, yeah, so what do I believe now? Honestly, just recently I've decided like I kind of figured out what I believe right now. And um, I still believe in Jesus. I still believe in the teachings that he taught. Um, although I, I can't really take any scripture or any book of scripture literally right now. Um, honestly, I just, I, it feels good to me to believe in, in Jesus and talk about, you know, his kindness and the characters that the characteristics that he has as a person and I realize that, that is something that I want in my life and um with the bible it's kind of hard because there's not like proof either way like you know and you could go down the rabbit hole of researching absolutely everything but the one thing that I do know for sure that I feel confident walking away from the LDS church because I don't believe that Joseph Smith was a prophet and I don't agree with um, Doctrine and Covenants 132 and honestly rereading I've been reading the Book of Mormon throughout this journey and you know it's you know reading it through a different lens really gives you a different perspective of a lot of things in that book and um, I don't agree I the the hardest thing for me is honestly just the dishonesty that the church has done they didn't teach the history how it really happened and I you know served a mission I taught people the restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ from Joseph Smith for 18 months straight. I gave him pamphlets and to find out the real way that it actually happened is traumatic. You know, I never knew about a hat and a rock. Like I mentioned, I never knew that Joseph Smith was a treasure digger. I never knew that Joseph Smith married a 14 year old girl and, you know, was going around and writing love letters to teenagers behind Emma's back. And I just, you know, it, it, they, they, the church kind of teaches this like cherry on top story where it's just like this nice little bow and it's, it's, it's not, that's not how it really happened. And, you know, I respect anyone who stays in the church and believes he's a prophet. But for me personally, it, I don't just, I can't justify that behavior. I cannot justify a 37 year old man marrying a 14 year old girl and telling her, you know, if you marry me, this will save you and your family's salvation. Like you'll be, you'll be able to be together forever in the next life. And I just, I don't believe that. And, um, you can go read Doctrine and Covenants section 132. This is where it talks about how it's a commandment. And if or not, Emma will be destroyed if she doesn't support Joseph and marrying more women. And, you know, I just don't believe that. I don't believe a loving God would destroy his daughter, Emma, for, you know, having a problem with her husband marrying multiple women, especially minors. And it's just kind of Warren Jeff's territory. If any of you know Warren Jeff's, it was a, you know, a break off of the LDS church and they believed he was a prophet and he married teenager girls and he's in prison because he's a pedophile. What he did was not okay. And he molested little girls, including his daughter, Rachel Jeff's. And, um, you know, I did some research on that and it's just, it makes me sick to my stomach. And so I just, I, I can't ever support an organization that thinks that that's okay. And not only that, but they were hiding that information. And, you know, I understand why they were hiding it, but it's not okay. 
and um, I'm sorry, I just, I can't justify that behavior. So right now I uh, will be focusing on the New Testament. I will still be having Christ in my life. I will still be praying. Um, and I just want to be a good person and help others when I can. That's really all that I want to do in this life is I want to be a good person. I want to help other people. I want to have Christ-like characteristics, you know, I want to be charitable, charitable, I don't want to judge other people, I want to just love them, and I know that some people will say, well, just loving people sometimes isn't real love, but it doesn't seem to be working out for the Mormon church too well when you have an LDS apostle sit and say that we need to have, bring out our musket fire for the LGBTQ community. That's not love, and, you know, we can just agree to disagree, but it's not my job or duty to call people out to repentance and I'm not, I'm not going to do that. You know, maybe Jesus Christ is able to do that, but I'm, I'm not going to compare myself to Christ. Um, he was the savior of the world that I believe and I just, I can't compare myself to him. So, you know, it's just something that brings me peace in my life to think about having a savior and having Jesus in my life. And, you know, at the end of the day, let's say even if it, it's not true, it doesn't do any harm for me to try to be a good person like he does. What is harmful is, you know, having a religion that is against people who are queer or having a religion that, you know, believed that people who were in interracial marriages was an abomination. The church did teach that, do your research. <laughs> um, that is harmful. That is absolutely harmful. Or the church used to teach that kids that were handicapped it's because they weren't valiant in the pre-mortal life and that's why they came down black or handicapped. And I don't respect that. I don't respect religions that teach crap like that. That's not okay. And when you're claiming to be a prophet of God, it's going to cause a lot of harm to these people, to gays, to children who are handicapped, people's self-esteem. They're, they're, they're gonna feel like they're worthless and no one is worthless. No one, I always loved, um, someone that I follow her, she goes by Exmo Lex and she always said something that says, you know, there's nothing that you're not worthy of. There's nothing that you're not worthy of. I get chills every time I say it. It's so unbelievably powerful. And, um, you know, my entire life, I just wanted to be worthy. I just didn't feel like I was ever good enough. And I wanted to be worthy to go to the temple. And I remember being 12 years old. And I remember there was something, a mistake that I made. And I was walking through an undedicated temple. When a temple is not dedicated, anyone's welcome to walk through it before it gets dedicated by the prophet of the church. And I remember walking through the temple and feeling so much shame. And I was 12. And feeling like God can't love me right now and that I should go repent because I'm walking through the temple and I made this mistake the other day. And I just remember feeling that way when I walked through this temple that was newly built in Utah. And, you know, I look back at those experiences and I realized that wasn't God making me feel like ashamed, like making me feel ashamed. That was this culture that the church has created. And I don't agree with it. And it's nice to be able to recognize that I am worthy and that I am worth it. And that if there is a God, that he does love me. And that if there is a savior and if Jesus Christ is real, that he did and he died for me. That's the best thing that I could ever tell someone. That's the most loving message anyone could ever tell. And that's all that I'm going to do because that's what feels good to me and that's what feels right to me. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now with my beliefs. Um... I don't know everything. I don't claim to know everything. I don't have all the answers to everything. But what I do know is what feels good to me and what doesn't feel good to me. And what feels good to me is walking away from this church and and still following Jesus Christ in a new light. And it feels right to me. It's not like it's been easy. It hasn't been easy to get here. But I can honestly tell you that I just feel so much happier knowing my worth in Christ, knowing that I was never worthless, you know? Like on my mission, there were so many times that I just, I felt so worthless, you know? And I felt like I'm not doing enough. Like I, there's no other way to just explain it. I just always felt like I was failing 
because for some reason I wasn't getting as many baptisms as other people were. And you know, a big message that they teach missionaries is that exact obedience will bring blessings. And I found out that that is absolutely not true, that we don't have to work for love. We don't have to try to work for Christ's love and blessings. If Christ really loves us and he died for every single one of us, there's absolutely nothing that you have to try to prove. You're already worthy. Just try to follow him. Try to do good things. Try to be a good person. Try to help other people when you can. Give what you can to those in need. It's not about building fancy buildings. It's about helping people in need. And there's so many people who need help. So many people who just need a friend. And I guess if that makes me, you know, what leaving the church and doing that and being deceived by Satan, so be it to other people. But I know that I haven't. And that used to, you know, that would, people saying that stuff about me used to really knock me down. But I've kind of worked through that and that doesn't weigh me down anymore. It has no more power over me, you know? And I don't have to wear certain things by the church to be enough for God and to be with my family forever. The church doesn't get to tell me what I'm worthy for. Only between me and God and how I feel and my relationship. And it's the best feeling ever to know that, that you don't have to go through anyone else to get to Christ. You don't have to do anything for Christ to love you. You don't have to do anything for Christ to love you. And I used to not think that that was true. But yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. And I didn't expect my video to get as many views as it has at all. I, but hey, if it's helping anyone out there, it's worth it. I've had family come at me and that's been really hard. And I spent many nights just crying and, but I also am able to finally stand up for myself and say, you can't talk to me that way or you know, I'm really sorry that you think that way about me, but I know in my heart that that's not true because I know who I am. I know who I am more than anyone else does. And that's the most powerful thing I can walk away from. So yeah, I just, if any of you are in the same boat or you're thinking about looking more into the church or you don't know where to begin, all I can say is just trust your gut judgment. That's all I can say. And I wish I trusted mine a long time ago. But um, just thank you guys so much for the support. Um, that's just kind of where I'm at. A lot of you asked, so I thought I would deliver. And I hope you guys have a wonderful Halloween day tomorrow. And have fun and be safe. Bye. Also hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. Thanks.